Okay guys, we are here at Davidson Orchard. It's like a country style. Uh, welcome to Davison Orchard. Let's just see a show of hands. First timers on the train this season. Forever. Very good. Okay, everybody, wonderful. Well, the Davison family, they've owned this orchard since 1933. In fact, uh, four generations have worked the farm over the years. And uh, something new this year that you've never seen before, if you've been here before, is on top of that hill right over there. That's 100 acres the Davison family just purchased last year. And that house they just finished for their grandson and Whoa. his wife and five children. They just recently moved in. I'm not sure if you can see the apple trees in their front yard. That's about three acres more of Honeycrisp apple trees. Do we have any Honeycrisp lovers on the train? There's only one? One? Okay, a few of you. Honeycrisp is a very popular apple if you're from the Okanagan. It's very sweet, very juicy. Hard to grow though. That's why they're more expensive than any other apple. In fact, all of those on the other side of the train are also Honeycrisp apple trees. We've taken oh, over some for a pumpkin one. patch because of the demand for Honeycrisp. Honeycrisp. Uh, they're hard to grow, but we've had success growing them here. One of the reasons is this climate, hot and dry weather, perfect for growing fruit. Let me explain. See that far mountain face over there? See how it's covered with evergreen trees way in the distance? Okay. Well, you really can't see the individual evergreen trees, but trust me, it's covered with forest. Okay, keep that visual and compare it to this side. Above our pumpkin patch, hardly any evergreen trees up there. That's all sagebrush up there. The point is this, it's hotter and drier on this side of the valley, colder and wetter on that far side. Uh, this is a microclimate area, and when you've got hot and dry weather, you're going to have greater sugar in your in your fruit. In other words, your apples will be sweeter planted on this side of the valley compared to the far side of the valley. As a result, when this came up for sale last year, the Davidson family quickly purchased it, 100 acres, because of this unique area, this microclimate area. Okay, what fruit or vegetables have we seen so far on the train ride? Peppers, zucchini, um, eggplants, cucumbers, pumpkins. pumpkins. You guys are really quiet. You guys have just been videoing, that's all. You can say something. <laughs> Cucumber, you're missing one. It starts with an A. Apples. Other than apples. Oh. <laughs> Tomatoes, that doesn't start with an A, but we'll accept it. Apricot. That one's hiding. In fact, it was the oh. first one by the parking lot. Not many people pick it. Well done. Good observation. <laughs> so our pumpkin patch this year is right here, obviously. Yeah. Last year, it was not right here. In fact, it was over there. So we rotate our crops each year to give the soil a bit of a break. And did any of you notice that we actually use black plastic underneath all these plants? Some of you are nodding your heads. If I remove the pumpkin plants, the tomato plants, the peppers, if all the plants were gone, you would see nothing but rows of plastic. There's two reasons why we use the plastic. The first reason is this. Any idea what's inside here? Water. Water. This is our irrigation. Very good. And it disappears. It goes into the soil and then it goes under the plastic. So on a hot day like today, uh, when we do water, there would be no evaporation. That soil stays moist because of the plastic barrier. And water here in the Okanagan is very expensive, so we have to conserve our water. Okay, the other reason for that plastic that you don't see, but it's there underneath all these plants, is no weeding necessary. So in fact, if you look, hardly any weeds are growing because of the plastic barrier. What we do is this, we, uh, we lay down the plastic in big long row, we poke holes. Every hole that we poke, we plant the pumpkin seed in the hole. So that just the pumpkin plant grows through the hole. Therefore, the, uh, the weeds can't grow through the plastic barrier. I say that, but every so often, a weed tends to break through the plastic barrier. In fact, if you follow this row up here, there he is, he's still living. He broke through, I don't know how he did it, but I've yet to pull him because it's a nice little story to tell everybody. So he survives for a few more weeks. <laughs> this here is not a weed. Someone on the other two or wow. a young farmer thought it was a pumpkin. Giant. I kind of like that actually. This Giant is a sunflower. sunflower, of course it's sunflower. So we plant sunflowers here on this side, 
as well this year. We planted them way up there just to make it look pretty because our busiest time of the year isn't that pumpkin season. Yeah. So uh, every October weekend, we, uh, we take the train, we stop the train right here and you go disappear and pick your own pumpkin. Fun thing to do with the family. So it's so busy that we thought we'd decorate our pumpkin pumpkin patch with some sunflowers. Okay, today's a special day because we get to pick an apple. So what we're gonna do is this, we're just gonna take the train down to the white tent, we'll stop again, we'll talk about the orchard, apple orchard, and then we'll be able to pick an apple. So here we go. Okay, before you get out, uh, a couple of things I wanna mention. People always ask me at the end of the tour, why do we have that white nanny? Because you don't really see it, but it's there. You'll see it as we go back to the market. Any idea why we have that white nanny over apple trees? So that bugs the, and birds? Yeah, bugs and birds. That's the common answer. In fact, no one gets the correct answer, unless you've been on the tour before, because it's such an odd answer. It's actually hail protection. Oh. So that, uh, that is a government grant. That white nanny there is a government grant. We're one of the orchards in BC that they're experimenting with. That white it is working when it does hail, which is very rare. Those apples under the netting are protected. There's no damage. Mm -hmm. However, this year we've noticed and we kind of expected that netting provides significant shade for the trees. And we've had a heat wave as most of you have experienced. Yeah. Too hot for some of these apples. In fact, some of the apples on these trees had black spots on them, sunburn. We removed those apples, so they're no longer there. But under the netting, no sunburn whatsoever. So that netting has provided significant shades. So much so that we'll probably invest in more netting in the future, not so much for the hail protection, but because of the shade that it provides, especially if we have extreme weather like we've had this summer. Okay, a couple more things before you pick an apple. Uh, these are dwarf trees. All of our apple trees in the orchard are dwarf trees, which means this, they have a very narrow root, so we can plant the next one close to the first one. And we keep them this height so we can pick most of the apples without a big ladder. And um, we paint them white. Notice that? White paint on the trunk of every tree. Yeah. That's common practice when you plant an apple tree in this orchard or in North Okanagan, that is. Why is that? Because we get snow here in the winter. And what happens is this. The sun reflects off the snow and warms up all these trees in the winter. But they need to stay cool or dormant. And we find the young ones, the baby ones, when we first plant them, don't survive the first winter unless we provide sunscreen or white paint. And what happens is that white paint just reflects the warmth away, keeps them cool until they survive the first winter and then they're established. So it's just a one application and it's just a latex cheap paint. Okay, who has picked an apple before in this orchard? Anybody? We are. You have to remember? Was it last year or many, many years ago? Many years ago. Okay, three. Oh, very good. Okay, well, usually I tell the young ones, all right, the young farmers, when you're ready to pick an apple, rather than tugging or twisting an apple, we're going to avoid that because that might bring down the other apples. Yeah. So I always tell the young farmers, every apple has an eye. The eye of an apple is pointing to the ground. Mm -hmm. So this is the one I want because I'm very hungry and these are very delicious. These are the silken. The silken are the first three rows here, the yellow apples. Very delicious, very sweet apple but you will not find them in Safeway or Savon. Uh, why is that? Because they have a very thin skin. They bruise easily. So all we do is we pick and we take them to our market 500 yards away. That's as far as they go because they're very fragile. So the silken, if I want this one here, I tell the young farmers, turn the eye to the sky, turn the apple upside down. So the eye points to the sky and it comes right off and then give it a good rub and then sink your teeth into it because it's very, very delicious. So everybody gets to have an apple. The yellow ones, not the max. The max aren't quite ripe yet. If you touch the max, you'll be electrocuted. So I don't want to avoid, I want to avoid that all day. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> you got that on video? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go have fun. Pick an apple each. Okay. Take some pictures. Call me if you want me to take a picture of your family. Thank you. Sure. Okay, I will do it like what he said. Okay, good. Then rub. <laughs> And then it's ready to eat. Okay? What we'll do is we'll plant a tree. These are dwarf trees, right? And uh, we'll plant it, we'll paint it white, and then we'll let it just grow for three years. Uh, we do nothing except if it bears fruit. If it bears fruit, we will strip that fruit right away. That way all the energy goes to the growth of the tree for the first three years. So these are year two. One more year before we start picking fruit to sell. 
and then they'll last 20 years. And after that, they, they'll still bear fruit, but we just find that the quality of fruit diminishes after 20 years. So after 20 years, we'll remove this entire section and start all over again. So we're actually removing 5% of the orchard every year. <clears throat> okay, any questions before we head back to the market? What to do with the apple core? That's a good question. If you're done your apple, before we get back to the market, you can always fertilize our orchard. Just, just roll it out. Maybe if you can aim it for under a tree so you can fertilize our orchard. Uh, but if you want to hang on to it, there's, there's a garbage can at the very uh, end of our tour back at the market where we load the train. All aboard, here we go. Yeah, just toss it out. <laughs> village so they are also have hen yung mga native oh, yan sila guys meron din kami dito look at that and then this okay wow so fat this is a goat 